2 Samuel 20. And there happened to be there a man of Belial, that's wickedness, devil, whose name was Sheba. And that'd be like an oath, a pact. Beer Sheba is where Abraham made an oath. Beer being water. Well, the son of Barkari, a Benjaminite. Well, Benjamin is trouble. And here's the Benjaminite. Shimei was a Benjaminite. Saul was a Benjaminite. And he blew a trumpet. Trumpets were used for military calling. And said, we have no part in David. Rebellion again. We just dealt with rebellion of Israel, the ten northern tribes. And we said, okay, we're going to bring David back, Judah. Israel is unhappy. With Okay, we got that done. Now this one man of Benjamin stands up, which is in Judah. We're not going to follow David. Another civil war rising. And all this conflict was was told to David by Nathan and it's just step after step after step and you think that there's, there's no letting go and here we go with another man we have no part in David now what is he saying he said Judah chapter 19 well you know this is our family this is our clan Judah Benjamin steps up well we're not of Judah we're not even of Israel. We have nothing to do with him. Our mother's Rachel. Judah was a Leah. And it's this constant battle of the tribes and four mothers. And you saw this fight with Rachel and Leah struggling to have these children. And here are the children picking up what their mothers and Laban, their father on their grandfather neither have we an inheritance in the son of Jesse that's a roundabout lie because Jerusalem is in Benjamin though Judah will occupy and overtake Simeon and Benjamin and when you think of J Jerusalem, you think, hey, the king, you think Judah, you think Jesus Christ of the tribe of Judah. And yet that land, according to Joshua, is in Benjamin. So this guy is speaking lies. Every man to his tents, O Israel. There's that O Israel from chapter 19. So he's going to get Benjamin angry with David. And he's going to continue the anger of Israel, a civil war, a mutiny. So every man of Israel went up from after David and followed Sheba, the son of Bar Barakai. Barak. So David has another issue on his hands. He has another uprising. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat. You can tell you preaching. Absalom. Barakai. I mean, uh, Sheba, son of Barakai, Israel. Shimei. But the men of Judah clave, that means stuck to, glued together. Clave is a word spoken in the Bible as a husband and wife. Be no separation. So Judah is going to step with David as though they were married. He's not getting, David's not getting any hard time from Judah. Unto their king. From Jordan even to Jerusalem. So that kind of trip back to Jerusalem was okay. Judah. Israel's angry. Now the tribes of Benjamin are angry. And David came to his house at Jerusalem. He's finally home. Back in the kingdom. And he took the ten women, his concubines. Chapter 15, verse 16. When he left them. Chapter 15, verse 16. <clears throat> chapter 15 verse 16 of Samuel and the king went forth he's leaving he's on the run all the household after him and the king left ten women which were concubines to keep the house we spoke about that before they're actual wives so 
He le- I don't know why he does it, but he takes off. Absalom's going to take over. And he leaves these ten women. And yet Nathan tells David, you did this with Bathsheba secretly. Absalom's going to do it before the sun, and he does. He will sleep with these ten women right out in the open. I don't know if David realized when he left these women, they're going to be the prophecy. So back in chapter 20, ten women his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house, housekeeper, part, and put them in ward, put them in the housing, and fed them. He took care of them, but went not in unto them, no marriage bed relations with them. So they were shut up in the ward unto the day of their death. Now watch this, living in widowhood. David hadn't died. He shuts them up and they're just as much as being widows to David. After what Absalom had done. Now we run to another problem. Problem after problem after. Life is good. Not for David. And the, then said the king to Amasa. Now here's another gentleman. 2 Samuel 17, 25. And we got to see who Amasa is. We're going to look at two verses. Amasa. And again, this looks like David's family. Like Joab. That Joab will be mentioned. Amasa. Now he's short time in the Bible. But it's very important to see who he is. 2 Samuel 17, 25. And Absalom made Amasa captain of the host instead of Joab. So when Absalom takes over the kingdom. Joab is with David. So the entire military campaign leadership. Of all Israel under Absalom is Joab. Now, in America, it's, it's kind of different because the head leader of our military forces, Navy, Army, Marines, Air Force, and Coast Guard, the head honcho is the President of the United States. He's called the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. What we're looking at here as far as the kingdom there would be the king. And under the king would be the commander of all the armed forces. Not the head of the country, but the head of the forces. And here's Amasa instead of Joab. Instead of Joab, which Amasa was a man's son. I hope so. Whose name was Asira, an Israelite. So he's Jewish. That's an important fact. We're going to read what we're going to read in a moment. That he went into Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, David's mother, sister to Zariah, David's sister, Abigail, David's sister, Zariah, who are Joab's mother. We've already looked at that. So here is one big, glad, happy family. David has nephew. nephew. And Amasa is Absalom's nephew. This is one great family. Now one more place. In chapter 19, verse 13. 2 Samuel 19, 13. Absalom's cousin. 19, 13. 2 Samuel. About Amasa again. After what we just read. Scripture with scripture. More about me. David and said ye to Mesa, Art thou not my bone and my flesh? Yes. You're my sister's something. Okay, ready? That's not what we're looking at, but they're family. God do so to me and more also. If thou be not captain of the host before me continually in the room of Joab. Joab has been kicked out by David. Why? David gave orders not to kill uh, 
Absalom. What did Joab do? He killed Absalom. David's like, you're out of here. And he finds out that Amasa has been made the military leader under Absalom. He calls him and he says, you're my military leader now. Joab, boom, he's fired. We need to get that too on the next event. So Amasa is the family. Amasa is the head of Absalom's military. Joab kills Absalom. David goes up to Mesa and says, Joab's out, you're in. Ooh. So back to chapter 20, verse 4. And the king said to Mesa, again, he's already the military leader. Assemble me the men of Judah, gather the troops. With, within three days, and be thou here present. Three days. Gather those men and be right here where we are. I don't know where he's at home or wherever he is. you got three days. That's the order. So Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah. No, Judah. Davis had it with Israel. You don't want to be? Fine, I'll call my brethren. Look at that, Judah. So Amasa assembled the men of Judah, but... But, that's a big word in the Bible. He tarried longer than the set time which he had appointed him. He took more than three days. Whatever reason, we're not even told the reason. David said three days, it's been over three days. And David said to Abishai, now this is Joab's brother, another relative. Now shall Sheba, the son of Barak, Barakrai, do us more harm than did Absalom overthrow the government. Take thou thy Lord's servants. Amasa has been fired. Abishai, you're now in charge. Amasa couldn't follow my orders. And now there's going to be more damage. Take thou the Lord's servants and pursue after him. Lisi get him fenced cities and escape him. So with the amount of time, David fears that Sheba is going to gather into cities. He's going to gather more people. He's going to gather an army. He's going to gather military strength. He's going to gather armies and arrows and whatever. And the delay that Amasa done will give him more time to get more people. That's exactly what Absalom did. So we got a new military commander. But it's not Joab. He's out. And David said to Abishai, Now shall Sheba the son of Barak do us more harm than Absalom. David does not want a return. <laughs> Of what just happened. Take thou the Lord's servants and pursue after him. At least he get him fenced cities and escape him. He gets into a fortress. And there went out after him Joab's men. Oh, ho, is that a kick in the pants? Here is Joab's military under a man that's not Joab. Can you see somebody getting angry? And the Cherethites and the Pelethites. And all the mighty men, and they went out of Jerusalem to pursue after Sheba, the son of Barakrai, however you say. Okay. When they were at the great stone, which is in Gibeon. It's funny, when you look at the, the land of Israel, there are places, you know, you think of Mount Rushmore, you think of... Uh, Plymouth Rock. You think about all these. There are rocks and stones in Jerusalem too. Here's this rock. It's got a name. And it would be a stone unlike any other stone. That It's that one, that great stone. It's got to be a big rock. Which is in Gibeon. Amasa went before them. Oh, okay. Here he is. And Joab's garment that he had on was girdled unto him. Is Amasa wearing Joab's garment? 
Or are we talking about Joab? And upon it, a girdle with a sword fastened upon his loins in the sheath. That's what the sword goes in, the pocket thereof. And as he went forth, it fell out. So he's walking along. And the sword completely falls out. And Joab said to Amasa, Art thou in health, my brother? They're the same family. That's important. You got cousins, whatever, talking to each other. Are thou in health? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with the right hand to kiss him. And, but Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand. So verse 8. Is it a mason that doesn't have the sword no more? Or is it Joab and he just picks up the sword that he lost? I don't know. But have we not seen this before? Chapter 3, verse 27. 2 Samuel 3, 27. In chapter 3, verse 27. This is nothing new for Joab. And when Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly and smote him there under the fifth rib. And he died for the blood of Asahel, his brother. And we learned that's not in wartime. That's murder. We discussed that. Go back to 2 Samuel chapter 3. You'll, you'll, we studied that in detail. Well, chapter 20, are you in hell? Let me give you a a good kiss, brotherly kiss, because we're family. And Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand, so he smote him there in the fifth rib. That's the tactic of Joab. And shed out his bowels to the ground, ripped him open, and struck him not again. He did not need to take the sword back out. One blow was a deadly blow. And he died. Joab has, mur Joab has murdered three people. I'm trying to think of the first one's name we just looked at. Um, Abner, Absalom, and now he has murdered Amasa. <laughs> and it's funny how they all begin with the letter A. It's interesting. Something to that. All right, Amasa is in a battle or going to a battle but it has nothing to do with Joab Joab has been fired Joab's men are put under Abishai Joab comes up he knows something's going to happen and he meets at Amasa why would he do this Amasa because he lost his job Amasa has it and now his men are under his brother Abishai what a humiliating experience and shame for Joab that he's not out as a military commander. He would not listen to David. And his own troops said, Joab, though you give me a thousand pieces of silver, David told us not to kill the man. David says, you're done. Joab, so what does he do? He Verse 10, but Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand. So he smote him therein in the fifth rib and shed out his bowels to the ground. That must have been disgusting. And struck him not again, and he died. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, pursued after Sheba, the son of Barakai. Joab has joined the military forces under his brother, but he has no business being there. He's acting like... He did with Abner. I'm in a military campaign. No, you're not. You've been fired. And one of Joab's men stood by him and said, He that favors, that's the only place that word shows up, He that favors Joab, and he that is for David, Knows that him that favors Joab and him that is for David. Look how this man has put. There, there's enmity between Joab and David. You can't do to both of them. Let him go after Joab. 
You want you like Joab? Then you go after him. We're gonna go with David. And Amasa wowed. That's the first time that word shows. It's the roll in. It's the flock in. He's having convulsions. And the only other place that wild shows up is Mark 9, 20. And that's when they come down off the mountain and they got this, this child. He's got the devil with him and he's foaming and it says he's wallowing, wild. He's foaming and he's just in his own foam, convulsing around the ground. Amasa is dead, but his body's still moving. That's disgusting. He wild in his blood. Mark chapter 9 was in the foam. In the midst of the highway. He's right in the middle of the highway. And when the men saw that. All the people stood still. He removed Mesa out of the highway. Into the field. Moved them over. And cast a cloth about him. That's where you see. They put that cloth over a dead body. It comes out of the Bible. He buried him over. He took a cloth and covered him. When he saw that everyone that came by came by him stood still. Everyone, they're walking along. They're supposed to go in the military. Oh, there's a mesa dead. Ooh, interesting. Hey, look at that. Look what the body's doing. Like a traffic accident. Yeah, like a, yeah, a traffic accident. They're rubbernecking. They're supposed to go in the battle. Here goes one guy. Listen, out of respect, let's move him off. Let's cover him. And Amasa probably had to have a lot of respect of the truth. They're just standing there like, well, what do we do? He's dead. And what we're going to do is we'll stop right there, pick up the military with David afterwards. But Amasa, another one killed by Joab. 